Okay, all welcome to our A to J Author New User Webinar. This is Jessica Frank with Cali. Um, today, just a reminder before we get started, you all are on mute. If you have a question, you can raise your hand or you can put your question in the question box. If you don't have a microphone, you can also put comments in the question box. If you're calling in by phone, make sure to enter your audio pin to be heard. And this session is being recorded and might be posted to our YouTube channel. Today's agenda is essentially a refresher for those of you that haven't used A to J Author in a while or haven't been using uh, A to J Author 6. This will reintroduce you to the software and give you um, an introduction to our tab structure and also the question design editor where the majority of your work is going to happen. John, did you want any intro before I get started? No. Hi, everybody. Okay. So um, the first thing to talk about in A to J Author, and I have screenshots here, but we can go into the live software if you guys have questions. Um, this is A to J Author 6. It's what's running live in our production site right now at www.a2jauthor.org. So the first thing you need to know about A to J Author is our navigation system. So we have navigation tabs along the left-hand side of the screen, and we'll go through them uh, in order here today but um, you can see that this is how you move around different parts of the software. The first tab is the About tab. It gives general information and metadata about the uh, guided interview itself. It's where you can include any branding logos or end graphics that you'd like to include in your interview. It allows you to add a feedback option for your end users that will provide feedback to you um, as the author if the end user clicks uh, Send Feedback. And it also goes to us as well, so that if there's issues with the software, we can dig into that. This is where you choose your avatar. In A to J6, we have three different skin tones, uh, one, two, and three, ranging from light to dark, and also whether you want a male or female avatar. And you can also choose the language options. Um, choosing language does not change the question text itself. If you type it in English, it will appear in English. What it does change is the Chrome within a guided interview. So the back, to the back but, uh, next, my progress, um, continue, yes, no, that kind of thing. It changes it for the end user. Can I jump in for a second? Sure. Back up one screen. So that feedback option, that, 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 should, uh, that should give you pause if you're an author. Um, it's, it's risky to allow self-represented litigants to send you an email in any way, shape, or form because um, uh, as we've experienced, people will choose that, uh, choose whatever uh, path is available to them to, to uh, tell you their life stories and, 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 and uh, ask you for you know, personal legal assistance of some kind. That's not what the goal of the feedback options button is. We, we've had it in A to J4 for years and it's given us um, occasional, but but sometimes you know unique and excellent feedback on on a problem that somebody was having with the with the software or the interface, um, and so we've and so we've decided that the the benefits outweigh the uh, the detriments. Um, in your case, you may not want to put the author's email address in there. Maybe that instead is an email that goes back to the legal aid organization um, if they have sort of a help at or a, or an info at um, address. Um, I just thought I would bring that up. Thanks. So this is the About tab. Um, as you can see, it has uh, the different metadata information here on the main screen and also has the options, um, if you can see where my cursor is, um, this is the About tab and there's also Layout, Feedback, Revision, History, and Authors that lets you add in more information that's not seen by the end user but uh, Revision History and the author that's working on it is helpful when you're trying to um, document what version you're on, who worked on it last, who may have touched it um, five years ago when it was last authored, all of that information is in the About tab. The next tab down is the Variables tab. This is where you can see all of your variables that are available in your guided interview. You can see what type it is, what, where it's used, whether it's a repeat uh, variable, variable used in a repeat loop, and you can load your HotDocs component file if you're using HotDocs. 
Remember, with the Hotdocs A to J workflow, you cannot load an A to J author variable list into Hotdocs. You can only go from the Hotdocs component file into A to J author. Here's what the variables tab looks like. So it gives you an alphabetical list of the variables, what type they are, whether they're used in a repeat, any comments associated with that that the author has added in. It's where you can create new variables by adding them or uploading your hot docs component file. Note the difference in A to J4, you could create variables on the fly within a question. In A to J6, you need to create all your variables in the, in the variables tab so that it can set the proper type and you can set whether the repeat options are, set, are pr uh, properly checked. It's worth mentioning that um, you know, it, it was really nice and convenient to just create variables uh, willy-nilly wherever you needed them and instead of having to pause, change context, and then go create them. But it was also the thing that was causing the most um, problems later in testing and in um, bugs or problems in guided interviews. Um, and with the new strictness of, A to J, of, of hot docs, we have to absolutely get the variable type, you know, whether it's text or true-false or, or such. Uh, or number absolutely correct, otherwise the, uh, the the document doesn't assemble at the other end, and so um, and so and so it made sense to to centralize this in one place for that purpose. Thanks. Um, we have a question in the question box that's asking about what's the difference between A to J five and six. The person was aware that five was in development, but what is six? So we had a little bit of uh, an identity crisis that occurred because of um, delays in getting the software out to you guys, merged with um, adding in our document assembly tool. So initially, A to J5 is what was the web-based version. Um, it was on our website for the last two or three years. Um, but we did a complete overhaul of that code in the process of adding the document assembly tool. And so that's essentially made it A to J6. So we are basically skipping A to J5 in terms of uh, being live in the world and being used. So uh, what is on our production site is now referred to as A to J6. Sorry for the naming confusion. We are trying to get it straight ourselves. Okay. So the next tab, next tab down the list of navigation tabs is the steps tab. This is what uh, the, the tool that acts as a main outline for uh, the guided interview. Steps to the user give a feeling of progressing through the guided interview. When they first enter an interview, they can see five steps. They see the courthouse in the distance. The fifth step is kind of far away. Um, as they move through the steps, steps get added if there's more than five, and uh, they progress. the end user progresses closer to the courthouse. You can add new steps on the steps tab. You can have up to 13, so 0 and then 1 through 12. But each step can have an unlimited number of questions. I've seen guided interviews that have over 400 questions, but they're all organized into this 13-step uh, limitation. So here's the steps tab. You can change the number of steps you have. You can change the name. Step titles by default, the, def the ones that come with a blank at an interview are all capitalized, but that's a style, style choice. You can make them however you want, capital, not capital. Um, and then the other two things to note on this tab are the starting point, which is always the first question of your guided interview. If you wanted to change what the first question was, um, you could change that here. And then exit point is if you want to allow your end user to exit and save their answers on LHI and then come back to a guided interview, you need to enable an exit point. We have a training specifically on uh, using exit and save and resume. It's on our YouTube channel and there's also a section of our authoring guide. So I won't go into that further, but this is where it happens. Jessica, there's a question. Uh, do we need to install and use Hot Docs any longer? Is this now built within A to J Author 6? Oh, we wish. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated question. The, the short answer is, is A to J 6 gives you the option of creating your own, uh, doing the document assembly either inside uh, A to J Author itself or using Hot Docs. So it's your choice. The, the, the decision making should be made on the, on, on the complexity of the document that you're automating. 
So lots of formatting or you've already got the document um, uh, and, and it's formatting in Word, I would go with Hot Docs. Um, just producing a, a letter, a list, a report, essentially a text document without a lot of um, uh, boxes or tabbings or things like that, then I would uh, investigate uh, whether you could do the whole thing in, in A to J6. Um, the, our goal is to, is, to, uh, is to do simple documents, which we believe an awful lot of uh, court documents can be done this way. Um, and uh, you know, and to and to learn from the community as well as iterate on features. Um, there's no way we could match the the uh, the capabilities and the uh, complexity that uh, that Hot Docs provides, and and we've taken a completely different path than they have. Almost all document assembly software that that's sold today is uh, based on Windows and based on Word. So you have to install it locally, and you have to have Word which acts as your essentially desktop publishing system. And then you mark up that document. You know, you, you insert little little holes where where variables or chunks of text will appear or not appear. With A to J6, we're taking a different approach, a different philosophy, where you sort of build the document from scratch inside the tool. It's done entirely inside of a web browser. So if you have a Mac, um, in which you can't install hot docs on, you know, it might be a it might be a better choice, um, and uh, we'll see how that works out. But um, you know, we've done some tests with some simple stuff, and it and it seems to be working well. But it but it is a different document assembly authoring experience. It's also a matter of timing. If you need your guided interview and your uh, document assembly package out to the world relatively soon, you should go with Hot Docs as well. Um, we're working closely with LHI to get the, our A to J DAT up on running on their server, but it does take time and it's a, it's a process. So it's not um, out there yet. So um, the next thing to talk about uh, here is how, um, here is how, when you edit a signpost using the steps tab, how it appears to the end user. You can see the closer they get to the end, this interview only had three steps, the closer they get to the courthouse as well. The next one down and where you're going to spend kind of the majority of your time in a guided interview is on the pages tabs. Uh, the pages tab. For purposes of A to J, a page and a question are um, the same, essentially. Um, not every page has a question in it, so sometimes they're just introductory screens or informational screens. That's why it's not called a question, but they're interchangeable. So on the Pages tab, you can open questions. You can also double-click on them. You can clone existing questions, so if you have um, a particularly complex logic or have your address field set up exactly how you want it and you want to use it again for the spouse's address, you can clone an existing page. You can delete pages. Um, the new button here is the save button that we've added to A to J6. Um, in the web-based version here of A to J, we auto-save every five minutes and every time that you go between different tabs in the interview but if you're spending a majority of your time here on the Pages tab to ensure that you've done some complex logic that it's actually being saved, that Save button has been added as a security blanket, sort of, to ensure saving is working. You can also add new pages here and new pop-ups. So pages are questions, that kind of thing. A pop-up is what appears inside of a page. It's usually definitional. So um, please tell me what jurisdiction you're going to be filing this paperwork in. The word jurisdiction may have a pop-up added that explains what a jurisdiction is. The pages have also lists all of your pages by broken up into what step they're in. By default, if you have a step but it doesn't have a question in it, then it's not going to show up on the Pages tab. To see all of your steps, they all have to have at least one question in them. And then a new feature also in this web-based version of A to J is here on the right, the icons that give you hints about what's in the page and whether it's required or not. So here on this question 2-name, it has text, text, text. The first text and the last text are required because that is the first and last name of an end user, but the uh, 
middle text is not required, be, the middle name text is not required because some people don't have middle names. Same for the gender question, it tells you that the gender field type is here and it is a required question. But you can see that one dash question one has nothing in it and so does a uh, new page. So this lets you quickly see what's going on in your interview. That's really hard to see in the screen right now, but when you when you're in the software, it's not something that your that your eye is you know that you're constantly watching. It's more of a sort of like a, like in your peripheral vision as a quick way. It's like oh man, I'm looking for the thing that has this logic in it. Then you can sort of scroll through and see only the the questions that have like the little the little logic icon, or, or I'm looking for the gender question question, and there's the little gender box. You know, we just found it to be a, an easy shortcut for. When, when, when you're sort of dancing around between, you know, long lists of pages. I also use it as an author to see if a question is required or not. So um, I may be going through it right before I start testing and I find that um, I want to know if I've made the address, what parts of the address are required. And because I know what I use to create the address, if it's text, number, multiple choice, that kind of thing, I can see what is required and what isn't based on the little red star next to the variable or next to the field. Then we have the map tab. Should be fairly familiar to anyone who's used A to J4. Um, it's a little bit different in that it doesn't have a visual representation of the question like it did in the flash version. Um, but our map is kind of a continuous project project that we're working on. So if you guys do use the map a lot, I'd love to hear how you're using it and how we can improve it in A to J6. But basics of the map, it gives you the, um, the forest for the trees version. You can see kind of how everything is branching together, how questions are connected. Um, and it also gives you the little icons that show you what is in a guided what is in your guided interview questions. A new addition for the web-based version of A to J is the files tab. It lets you see everything that is in your guided interview. In this one, for example, I can see that I have the guide.json. That's what our new A to J viewer uses for the mobile responsive viewer. Guide.xml is the file that's used within the authoring system itself. And I see that I have three templates created. So those templates.json are three templates created using our new A to J DAT, the document assembly tool. And so back on that, if you had um, if you had like a list of counties, then you know there'd be a counties.xml. That's where that is. Um, you know, external XML files. If you had um, image files, they would appear there. And um, I'm, I'm right, aren't I, Jessica? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and if you had a video, or if you had uploaded, um, you know, uh, dozens of uh, MP3 files, um, those would all appear there as well. So it's one place to see everything that makes up all the files that, that do a, a native J guided interview. It's a great place to check if you're converting a four to a six to ensure that everything you want in the guided interview is in the file that you uploaded. So um, with A to J6, you can upload a zipped file. So go right to LHI, download your existing A to J4. When you download the zip file from LHI, it includes all your images and your external XML files, all the things you had in your existing interview. And instead of having to just upload the interview and reattach everything, we've added the ability to just upload the zip file itself. And it's A to J is supposed to put those back into the right path based on uh, the relative name of the file. So this is a great place to ensure that the file that you uploaded and unzipped, that A to J unzipped, contained everything that you expect it to contain. We are working on adding the ability to delete files from this field, uh, from this tab. So it's not there yet, but it's one of the issues that, one of the features we're adding is the ability then to delete. So if you have the wrong county list, you can delete the wrong one uh, from this and then upload the new one. So let me let me talk about that just really really quick. You'd think uh, the ability to like just put a little X there that says delete is easy, and it is. Um, what what's hard is uh, when you get the email that says I accidentally deleted. Can you get it back for me? Um, and and the uh, and the difficulty of doing something like that at, a, at when you're running a server based uh, service. So so you, we so we can't just implement delete. We have to delete. We have to implement. Uh, and are you sure? Um, 
and probably we, we have to implement it what's essentially a recycle bin, right? Something that where, where the file goes, but it's, but it's there forever, but it's not visible to you until you go to some special place like the recycle bin and say, you know, empty my recycle bin. Um, because that's the expected behavior these days of, of, of creating a, an application for users is, is they, they make mistakes or they, or they change their mind is totally cool. This is a development environment. You're going to be learning as you're going. You're going to be doing lots of different things. And so the, the interface has to be friendly enough to, to catch you when you, uh, when you, when you do things that, that you want to reverse. Um, all that's to say that um, what, what seem like simple um, you know, functions to add um, when you unpack them are actually complicated. And so that's why we're not always. Uh, that, that's why it's not that we're dumb programmers. It's that we're 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 smart interface um, developers, you might say. Same thing goes for on the pages tab. We don't have an undo button. So if you do something, you can't automatically undo it. If you didn't mean to delete it, if you didn't mean to uh, create a new page, that kind of thing. Um, same reasoning that we're working on it, but it's not quite there yet. The pages pages are a little different because they're fairly easy to recreate from scratch. You know, the most you lose is uh, you know ten or fifteen minutes if it's a particularly complicated page. And on a, and and the the use case is that you're more likely to create like a bunch of pages and then start filling them out and realize you created one or two more than you needed. So I just want to delete those. You know, so so the likelihood of needing an undo is lower. Uh, the need for doing a quick delete is higher, and the ability to, to uh, you know, and, and the and the workaround if you accidentally do delete something of, of use is is a is is only small pain as compared to deleting a file, which you know if that was your only copy, then you're then you're then you're in bigger trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, another new addition to the web-based uh, A to J is the All Logic tab. For those of you that are updating four to sixes, you're going to become very familiar with this page. This shows all of the logic that exists in your interview. So instead of in four, where you had to click on every single question that contained logic, go to the Advanced tab and then look at the logic uh, and click through the different parts. This shows you all of the logic that's sitting in your interview. Um, and it will also show you if there's something wrong with it. So for example, if there is an error in your logic, it will, the box will be red instead of black, and it will often have an explanation. Um, it's usually unidentified uh, or unexpected identifier. If you've forgotten to close a bracket, if you've um, forgotten a quote, a parenthesis, something like that, um, unknown variable, if you created the variable on the fly in A to J4 and then didn't go back and ensure that it was in your variables tab, um, those kind of things are uh, what you'll see a lot and what I've seen when I've converted some pretty extensive uh, A to J4s to 6. And then the All Text tab is similar to the All Logic tab in that it shows you all the text in your interview. So for example, you are testing and you find that you spelled judgment wrong in 14 different places. It would be hugely annoying to have to go through 14 different questions and change it. Here you can just change the text of your question in one place. Preview mode is also where you should be spending a large amount of your time once you've completed your interview in testing it. Preview mode is essentially the A to J viewer as the end user would see it plus. The plus is this variables and script window that I have open here. Whenever I'm testing a guided interview, I always have this window open. You open it by clicking the variables slash script button at the bottom. And what it does, it shows you all of the variables and what answers are held in the answer file for those variables. And then the script window underneath gives you a step-by-step -step what's happening in your guided interview. So setting variables, moving to specific pages, answers that are being given in real time, um, whether there's logic after a question and whether that logic was green, true, or red, false, what happened based on whether it was true or false, and then if there was logic before. So this is very helpful to have open while you're testing. And it's something that's not available once you move to testing on LHI. So you have to test first in A to J author in order to access this uh, added variable script window. This is, this is interesting. Back on that, back a page. Um, that, that feature 
it is it's it's kind of funny it was hard it's very it's kind of difficult to code that it was so so that's another way of saying it was expensive and I mean expensive in programmer hours and time um, but but so often you find yourself and this is especially true for people writing you know really large interviews the the online intakes are all really large or the complicated ones it's like you're in some intricate piece of logic and you can't tell why it doesn't seem to be working and because it's large it's hard to test right every time you test you have to work your way through a bunch of steps to make sure that there's data there so that the test can be meaningful you know and and so this gives you sort of a you know an autopsy uh, a live ongoing um, you know x-ray vision into what's going on and that is so powerful and and if you've done it, not that many of you have done very much JavaScript development, but if you've done any any sort of web development, you know about the console. You know this is very much sort of like a console into A to J, and and so we pr tried to take some of our inspiration from from those developer ideas, but again make it um, comprehensible to to lawyers who we know are not necessarily programmers um, in this situation. Um, it's one of those things where you, where you, where you though you have to really think: or is this worth spending effort on? And because it's not going to be used by everybody all the time, but in the times when you need it, it's it's so vital, and so it it, it was worth it. Thanks. It'll also show you if your logic has a syntax error. So my logic's not running. I expect it to run. A to J will throw up a, an error message here after it says, for example, uh, logic after question. It would have a little message that says syntax error so that you can go back and know you need to check on that interview, the, that logic in that question. So I already explained what it does. Uh, the report tab is something else that is helpful when you're reviewing your got to interview for readability. If you have um, outside testers that aren't necessarily tech friendly, so subject matter experts perhaps, that want to just see all the questions and read through it, you can print them a full report um, that shows all your variables, all your questions, the order in which the questions are connected, and what the questions actually say. It also gives you the uh, read clearly uh, write a, uh, readability score. So we've added, uh, we've worked with the write clearly read clearly people to add in the Flesh Kincaid and a couple of other um, scores for grade levels in terms of readability. And so those are included in your full report. The transcript report is what you would uh, send to your translator if you wanted your guided interview in Spanish. You would send them the transcript report. All they have to do is uh, translate those phrases, and then you'd be able to copy and paste them into the Spanish version of your guided interview. It's also great if you're recording audio clips specifically to add to your interview questions. This is the report tab. It's pretty simple. It only has two buttons. If for some reason your buttons aren't working, make sure you're scrolled to the top of the page. Um, sometimes when you scroll down, it can, um, have the buttons are a little flaky in terms of whether they work or not. So just make sure you're scrolled to the top. This is an example of a full report, the beginning of it. It shows what steps are in it, whether there are any pop-ups, the um, metadata behind the interview. This is what it looks like when it's showing a question. It says the, the step they're on, what the question text is, what the variables are, what the prompts would be, what variables used, what labels used, etc. In contrast, this is the audio script for that same interview. So there were only um, a few questions, and this is all the text that was in those few questions. There's a question in the uh, question box um, from Steve Simon. As a cloud-based software, will 6.0, will A to J6 test identically as it will function after it's uploaded to LHI? As we know, uh, Hot Docs doesn't. Steve, that's a great question. And the short answer is, Nothing runs the same when you move it from from one location to another. There, there's no perfect um, way of doing that. The long answer is we've done a we've done a lot of work so that that so that any changes that that might you know so that the way you run it on in in author mode is exactly the same as as how it would run on on uh, LHI or in in any any other environment. Um, it's essentially running the same code. But you heard the word essentially in that sentence, um, and, and the difference is you're, you're, 
is is not a, not anything under our control. You're just in a different environment, and because of the number of variables involved with installing and running, you know, uh, any software, you can never control for all the possible changes in that environment. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll close this answer with one one point: was this was one of the beauties of Flash. Um, Flash was its own entirely contained environment, and so whatever we did in Flash was whatever happened in Flash, no matter where you put it. Um, and that's less so with a, with a JavaScript-based um, uh, tool, um, just because JavaScript is you know lives closer to the browser, lives closer to the server, um, you know. But but as much as we are are coming to uh, lament the loss of Flash uh, and its security problems, you know, it had some features and capabilities that, um, that you know, made it quite capable at the time. I, Steve, in terms of uh, testing or any authoring I've done, I haven't seen any differences between our preview and um, production, or between LHI's rebuild QA, except that sometimes based on the size of the screen and the fact that the A to J viewer is sitting in an iframe on LHI, uh, sometimes the uh, position of the avatars looks a little different. But um, we are working with them to have the latest version of our viewer be the, latest, the same exact latest version of the viewer that they have as well. Okay. So um, the Publish tab is where you're going to be able to download your zip file or download just your A to J file. Um, this is if you're sharing with other people, if someone's working on it, if two people are working on a guided interview and they're not sharing an account, you can download the zip the same way that you did in A to J4 and send it to the other person via email or whatever, Dropbox, and then they can upload it themselves and work on it. Um, this is also where you publish to Rebuild QA, and very shortly our production site will have a button that says Publish to LHI Production. So that's, this is where you're going to upload to LHI as well. Um, the other tab that, uh, that aren't on here on screens are the Templates tab. That's where our document assembly tool lives. Um, we've done a couple of webinars on that already that are on our YouTube channel. We also have uh, chapter 15 of our authoring guide deals specifically with the templates tab. Feel free to poke around that. And the final tab is the interviews tab. That's the first tab you come to when you uh, open up A to J Author, the software itself on the web, and that just lists all of your guided interviews um, and lets you create new ones or upload existing interviews. So um, to finish off, we'll talk a little bit about question design and the editor where most of your work is going to happen access it the same way you access any other part of A to J by going to our website um, and then you go to the pages tab you want to create a new page you can click the new page uh, to create a new question by default an A to J comes with four questions in two steps so it has the three questions in step zero and the one in step one if you click on a question to edit it the question design window the editor opens and this is where you're going to actually create the question itself. So you can edit the step, what step it's in by the drop down menu, so you can move the question. You can change the name of the question. You can add notes that are just seen by you or other authors who have access to the authoring version of this. You can change your question text. You can add audio. That's a little blurry, sorry, but um, if, you if you click into the question text section, uh, text editing options pop up, including the ability to embolden, italicize, indent, outdent, add hyperlinks, and add pop-ups to your question text and to your learn mores. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, you can add a learn more prompt. The prompt is the question that the end user avatar thinks. The learn more answer is, or the help is the answer the end the guide avatar gives. You can add audio to that. You can have uh, plain old text as the reply that the guide avatar gives, or you can have a show me graphic or show me video to include that. And now that LHI allows for larger file size uploads, um, I think it's up to 25 megabytes, um, now you can have pretty large files, including videos or graphics. So those are great ways to um, make your guided interview more helpful for the end user. And the final part of this question text section is repeat loops and whether uh, you include a counting variable. 
We also have a training on repeat loops um, that you can watch on our YouTube channel. I see we have a question. Oh, Miranda Magelli from LHI actually said that they no longer have an upload size limit. So that's great news. So use those show me graphics and make all the videos you want in your guided interviews. Thanks, Miranda. Okay, so um, this is the field section of, of your uh, question design editor. Not every question has to have a field. So by default, there are no fields in a guided interview. But fields are ways in which you can collect input from your end user, something they're going to have to type in or select. That's where you can collect. Uh, that's what you use a field for. So we have the field type. So it can, I'll show you a screen. In the next screen, I'll show you the different types of fields. The label is what's in front of that field for the end user. The variable is what variable is used. Default value would display to the end user. So um, by default, you could have, for example, New York State if you were in New York, um, if the question was, what state do you live in? You can make a question required or not. You can set max characters. You can have a custom prompt if they don't fill out the answer and it's required. And then sample value at the bottom is a new thing in A to J, uh, the web-based A to J, that is for you authors as you're testing. So it's a huge pain in the butt when you're testing, like John said, to have to fill in this data over and over again. So if you have a question like an address field, uh, address question. You can put in sample values for, say, what is your street address? You can have it 1234 Main. That's the sample value. Uh, city is Chicago. State is Illinois. Zip code is 60074. Whatever it is, um, those sample values, then when you're in preview, you can hit fill and A to J will auto-populate all the fields on that question. Um, so you just have to click continue basically to test the question instead of typing all that information in. Fields, this just explains a little more. Um, you can add calendars, you can add calculators, you can add internal and external XML lists for drop-down options. Here's an example of the field types, text, number, dollar, social security, phone, zip, regular number, pick from a list, date, gender, radio buttons, and checkbox, and checkbox, none of the above. So the type is just the way in which the answer is, uh, the field is displayed to the end user or the expected uh, information is uh, gathered from the end user. So for example, number, it's not going to allow the end user to type in uh, letters. Date, it's only going to let the end user type in uh, month, month, day, day, year, 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 four years. Um, so that kind of thing is just controlling how the end user can answer the question. If we continue scrolling, we have the button section of uh, the question design editor. Buttons are ways in which you connect questions to one another, and it's also the way in which you can get simple answers out of an end user. So yes, no, uh, married, single, have kids, don't have kids, the kind of things that don't require the end user to type something in. In this section, you can add and delete. Repeat options, which is covered by our repeat loop uh, webinar. And then attaching the questions one to the next is handled with the destination. You can have up to three buttons. By default, there's only one, the continue. And your button labels can be whatever you want them to be. They don't just have to be yes or no, true or false. They can be yes, no, we're pregnant, for example, to the question, do you have any children? But by default, there are only three, or by maximum, there are only three buttons. This just explains a little bit more about what a button can do in terms of assigning a variable, selecting from the list of existing questions to branch from one to the other, or incrementing or setting a counting variable for repeat loops. Um, this, when you select the destination uh, option for the button, it gives you a list of your existing questions and lets you pick from ones you've already made, including special options like success process form, or back to prior question, these are um, A to J commands, essentially, that are covered in an exiting uh, webinar as well. Finally, advanced logic is going to look a lot different for those of you that have used A to J4, um, but it's cleaner and actually easier in terms of the number of steps you have to go through as an author in order to write logic. So each question has this advanced logic section. 
it has a before box and after box. If you want the logic to run before the end user sees the question, put it in the before lock box. If you want it to run after the end user has pressed whatever button you have available to them, like continue, next, yes, no, whatever, put it in the after box. And you just use if else statements. So um, five commands, if else, go to set and if. You can also nest, so uh, if statements. So if you really want to deep in, dig deep into programming and test your muscles there, um, you could have if user gender equals female, and under it nested if user gender, or if um, has kids, TF equals true, ask are you currently pregnant? Um, so you can nest if statements within other if statements. Um, just make sure that every if has an end if, and every logic statement command, so if else go to set end if, all have to be on their own line. In this logic, just like in the all logic tab, if you have syntax errors or um, variables that A to J doesn't recognize or you've forgotten to close a parenthesis, something like that, A to J will turn the box red and it will tell you what is wrong with it. If you have questions about your logic or you can't figure out how to replicate something, email me and I can walk you through it. Um, all of the logic in four has been converting perfectly in terms of what it did in four, it does in six. The only issue I'm seeing with converted four to six interviews is, um, we talked about this last month a little bit at the, the known differences webinar, but if you have, for example, your true or false in quotes, um, you have to take the quotes off because true and false is Boolean now in A to J6. Um, I've seen logic that authors might have thought worked in four, which actually I don't think was working the way they expected in four um, because they forgot a parenthesis, they didn't close a bracket, they didn't uh, finish a macro, they, didn't, they had a variable that didn't exist in the variables tab, those kind of things. So that's where the all logic tab is incredibly helpful um, to see your logic outside of the question. This again is the example of the all logic tab. That's it. Um, any questions for me or John, I guess, because he's on here too. So obviously that was a lot to, uh, to sit through. Um, um, but thank you, Jessica. That was, I, I learned stuff every time I listen to this. Um, but the best way to learn um, more about it is to uh, actually use it. Uh, jump in create a guided interview, start poking around, you know, um, and become familiar with the, uh, with, with, the, with the interface. We have a sample exercise on our website under uh, the Learn tab for new author resources that works with Hot Docs. So if you've never done a guided interview or a Hot Docs template before, you go run through the sample exercise. It takes about an hour, and you have a complete A to J guided interview and a Hot Docs template um, that gives you kind of the basics. And I'm almost done with the sample exercise that would, would replicate this in our document assembly tool. It's just running through a final internal Kali check um, before we release it. So I uh, highly recommend that if you don't actually have a project to work on right now. And as I mentioned, our authoring guide, it's uh, 15 chapters plus appendices about uh, everything to do with A to J. So if you have questions, I would start there as well. Otherwise, I'm always available at Jessica at Kelly.org. Jay Mayer at Kelly.org as well. Thanks. All right, so I'm not seeing any new questions. Thank you all for attending, and we will see you back here in May. Thanks. <laughs>